Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video we're going to continue off from where we left off, essentially last time allowing ourselves to actually hit the resources and giving the resources some health. Now this time around let's also make the resources, well actually drop resources, and other than that I also want to make give them a little pop effect, but first I actually want to solve a bug that we have, uh, that we had in the last game, which was the duplicating of this. I finally found out what actually happens, um, so I'll see here if I can replicate it, and of course I cannot. Well, essentially what was happening was that there we go that happened so now you can see now i have two axes all of a sudden and the axe in my hand also disappears until i bring it back now what actually happens is the axe when we pick it up still has the layer that we can interact with so we essentially need to ensure that we don't pick up what we have in our hand and for that sake we don't want to pick up what other people have in their hand either now one of the good ways of going about this is upon spawning it which we do, 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 do in the player inventory we should also set the layer of the entire item to be something else that we you know won't be picking up so going back into our setup here onto the game man you have the interaction man you can see we can interact with interactables and items um, but we can essentially set them on some layer for example ignore ray casts uh, in order to get it to not do that so ignore ray cast will be layer i believe five no two layer two is ignore ray cast so let's quickly first of all just make a private constant and that'll be int and that'll be the ignore ray cast layer which will be two not f there we go and now with this when we equip the item we essentially want to set the layer in hand as well now, one thing is we want to do this for the item for everybody. Now, the item inherits from network behavior, which means that we can uh, do this. Let's do it when it's spawned, actually. So let's do item in hand, and then we can queue on spawned. This essentially means that we can call some kind of method or handle some kind of action when the item is spawned. And what I want to do is I want to go into the item in hand, and I want to set layer to our ignore raycast layer and if we go into the item in hand now and make that method so you can see now here we have it i want to make this an observers rpc that also has buffer last to true this now means everybody joining will also be calling it with the same information and essentially here i want to make a private void set layer recursive where we feed the game object and this will just be the object and the end of the layer that we want to set it to and essentially what we do is we set the layer of the object and then for each one of the object's children we'll do the set layer recursive again so essentially that's the recursive motion is that it calls itself until there's no more children to call it on and then here we can just call it on itself and ignore raycast layer so this should really do the trick for us uh, and so now we shouldn't be able to pick it up as it should have changed layer when we pick it up so now if i go and do this i equip it down here and boom i take it on now let's go on to our player here and find the item the axe and you can see now it's on the ignore raycast layer and also the child is which means we can now not pick it up by accident cool so that little bug out the way let's now go and make sure and actually maybe let's just test with another client real quick just to make sure that it works as it should so i'll go on to that client and we'll pick up the axe oh and of course i forgot to save the scene here we go so he'll oops there we go he'll pick up the axe like so and he will equip the axe and now that he has equipped the axe, you can also, whoops, you can see how it is when he looks around. The axe is here, you can see when he, uh, oh, we, we, don't, we of course don't trigger the animation yet. I also need to network that. That's an easy trick. Let's go and find the item point on the axe. And you can see now this is also on the ignore raycast, which means we can't go and pick up the axe and take it from him. So cool, that works really well. And let's all, of course also just quickly network the animation. This is very easy to do. Uh, all we essentially have to do is on the axe, on the body, where we handle animation, we want to add a network animator. And now we don't want to auto sync parameters. We do want it owner auth. Um, and then in here, where we are take, getting the animator, which is right here, we want to instead get the network animator. And that should really do the trick. So now if I go back into my axe here, I should be able to drag the body to here again. And now we should see it networked as intended. And there we go. Now you can see that he successfully hits as he should when he hits the tree. Cool. Now let's also do something else. Let's set it up so that the tree does a little pop animation when it actually gets hit. And then let's also spawn resources when it dies. So let's get into the world resource first and let's set up some uh, parameters here for essentially handling that little pop animation. So first of all, I'm just gonna make a little header to make it nice. And then let's call that animation. And I'm gonna do a serialized field, private. And let's do it something like float. That'll be pop duration. And this can be something like, I don't know, how long does it pop over 0 0.2, 0 0.3 maybe? Let's also do a serialized field of private float uh, pop intensity. And I'll just make that uh, again. Let's do 0 0.2, for example. And then let's lastly do a serialized field 
private animation curve and this will be the pop curve and yeah we'll just set that in editor cool so now whenever that it takes damage uh, we essentially want to call the pop curve and the way that we can figure out when it does take damage is in the awake we can do on changed and on health changed we essentially make a method for that and let's also remember to unsubscribe in on destroy so let's call on destroy and then let's remember to unsubscribe it here and we'll make this method here which is now the on health changed and this will be the new health Cool, so now that we have this, this is essentially where we can start the animation from. Now I'm just gonna make a private coroutine uh, that we can keep track of here. And this will be the pop coroutine. And essentially the reason why I do this is because I wanna be able to call it as an enumerator so that we can handle the time in there. And this will be the, let's just call it do pop. And now here we can essentially say if the pop coroutine does not equal to null, then we want to stop the coroutine of the pop coroutine and then we essentially want to start the coroutine that's called do pop. I hope this makes sense if you're familiar with iron numerators and coroutines. I imagine you should be at this point and now we should be able to animate it in the coroutine. Now let me put this down at the bottom because this is not very important functionality to me so I like keeping it out the way. And the way that we want to do this is I want to keep track of some time. So I'm going to make a float, call it t and set it equal to zero. And now we're going to make a while loop essentially while t is less than the pop duration we want to do some stuff in here. One of the things that we want to do is we want to do yield return null, which is essentially waiting for a frame. And we also want to count the time up. So we want a time plus equal to time dot delta time. So now we're counting it up. And now with that in mind, we can now also do the, um, the actual functionality of the pop. So let's do that. So first of all, uh, we can easily get the pop amount by uh, essentially taking the curve, evaluating the time over the pop duration, which means this will be between zero and one, and then timing that with whatever pop intensity that we want. Uh, and then we can essentially apply this to the local scale. So right now it's trying to do it with the position, but that's wrong. I want to transform the local scale. And when we start this, actually, let's also keep track of the initial scale. So let's do yeah start scale. And then we want to uh, essentially set it to the start scale plus vector 3.1 times the pop amount. And this should essentially make the visuals of it pop a bit. So let's try and test this and see how that works. So let's get into this here. Let's do the pop curve. I'll essentially make a curve that goes something like this, that goes between zero and one and essentially just pops up and down something like this. Just so it's like a quick pop up and down. Or we can maybe even make it spike a little bit earlier. Something like this might be good so that it'll kind of naturally find back to its place. I think something like that's completely fine. And let's try and test this now. So if I try and hit start, I want to pick up, of course, the X and we hit it. And there we go. Now you can see it does a little pop when it gets hit. Oops. There you go. A little pop. Uh, and I think this should be a lot quicker for it to look really good. This one's difficult to hit. I guess we haven't set it on other trees. That might be why it's difficult to hit. We don't we don't talk about that. That never happened. Let me copy the component of this one and paste the component values on these. Uh, and I think in general, actually, let's just make the pop duration way faster. So maybe let's try 0 0.15. See what that looks like. Pick this up. Oh God, that looks way better. So now when it gets hit, it does a little pop. And I think that looks nice. Can be very satisfying. And yeah, that looks really well. So now let's try and make it actually drop something. The easiest way to do this is just giving it whatever to drop. So let's do a serialized field, private item, and this will be the uh, drop item, something like this. And then when it dies, this is only handled on the server. We'll essentially just instantiate the drop item at some position. We could actually allow you, sell, you to set the position. So let's do serialized field, private vector three, drop position. Um, and this will of course, uh, call for a gizmo again. I really like making gizmos for these kind of things. So let's do gizmos.color is green because it's a drop. I think that's a good thing. Let's do gizmos.draw wire sphere. And I want to do uh, transform .transform points to the drop position. And this should be 0 0.15 or something like that in radius. That should be perfectly fine. And now let's instantiate the drop item. So let's just instantiate drop item at the transform .transform point to the drop position with uh, quaternion.identity as rotation. Cool, I think this should work pretty well. So now let's try and do this and test it out. Cool, so starting the game, let me grab the ax, do that, and let's try and hit it. Uh, and of course, right now it has no drop item, so it's gonna call an error, I guess. 
because I forgot to add it. And I'll go, yes, it indeed called an error. Now let's just tall the trees here, add the item of type wood, and also let's just check out the drop position. Let's increase these to make them drop somewhere around here, I guess. A little bit up in there, I think that works. And let's test it out again. So let me equip that. There we go, now we hit, we hit, we hit, and one last time, and there we go. Now we drop some wood, and we can indeed pick up the wood, take it into our inventory, drop the wood. And yeah, now we have a way of essentially getting resources. You can of course do the same thing with stones, you can do the same thing with trees. You can do it exactly how you like it, but yeah, now we have a good way of getting resources. We could randomize the amount of drops, that might be a nice little extra thing to add, so let's try and do that. Uh, so let's just do a serialized field, and let's do a private vector to uh drop amount range and this will just be between new vector two and let's make that between yeah one and three i think is probably good and now let's do a random drop amount so let's say var drop amount equal to random in unity engine dot range between the drop amount range dot x and the drop amount range dot y plus one uh, and let's do a for loop for the drop amount let's do that boom there we go and now we're following through it and it should spawn a random amount between one and three now let's try that out picking up the axe equipping the axe and let's go and hit the trees and here we go and there we go two pieces of wood dropped let's try this tree see what it drops if it's anything good and i'll go two pieces of wood again let's try this one there we go two pieces of wood seems like we're getting uh pr pretty consistently two pieces of wood here oh why are we just getting two what's happening here is this really just random there we go, three pieces. Okay, I guess it is just random. But yeah, now we have a good way of getting wood. We can stack it over here. <laughs> okay, very cool. And yeah, that should basically be it. I hope you learned something new. Hope this video was helpful to you as always. Uh, please do leave a like, comment and subscribe. Let me know what other videos you'd like to see. And uh, join the Pernet Discord. And I just hope that you have a wonderful day.